temple upon the throne we raise up sound we raise up sound for he is god and god alone alleluia alleluia for wherever you are can you lift up your voices to god can you lift up the name of God? Can you appreciate him? Can you give him thanks? Can you give him glory, all adoration, all honor? Oh, unto the lamp upon the throne. Can you raise your voice? Raise your voice to praise the name of the Lord. He's the king of kings. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's our beginning. He's our end. He's the Lord of Lords, the Lord of hosts. He's Jehovah Most High. He's El Shaddai. The one who won who is and is to come. The Lord who has kept you. Your protector. Your shield. Your buckler. Your strength. Your Lord. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Can you give God worship? Can you give God worship? Can you celebrate the name of the Lord from the depth of your heart? From the depth of your heart, can you celebrate the name of the Lord? Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you worship. Be thou exalted. The Lord who has turned every evil agenda of the enemy to a favor for you. The Lord who has turned their evil thoughts to be a testimony for you. Can you praise the name of the Lord? Oh, the enemies have wished a lot. They have done a lot. But the Lord who is your strength, your shield, your protector, your buckler, he has been there. He has been God over your life. He has been God over your destiny and he's still God. Can you celebrate his name? Can you give him praise? Can you worship him? Oh, Father, we worship you. Oh, this morning, Lord, we are gathered in your name. He won't accord. He won't lack mind, Father, to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we raise a sound. We raise a sound. Oh, Father, oh Lord, we use our tongues to raise our sound to heaven. Father, even when they have set those straps, you have been God over us. You have guided us. You have kept us. You have, you have gone in the way. You have gone through those ways before us. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Oh, Lord, let's like I say, we say thank you. Oh, God of miracles, we say thank you. God of signs and wonders, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for being the pillar of our life. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for being the pillar of our destiny. Thank you for being the pillar of our family, oh Lord. We thank you. Oh, in one word, um, can you just say, Father, we thank you for our father and our mother in the Lord, Daddy, E, Adeboye, and Mommy, Gio. Can we say, Father, we thank you for them. Thank you for Pastor E, Adeboye. We thank you, God, for Mommy, for Lu Adeboye. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing with them, what you're doing through them, and what you will still do. Father, we adore your holy name. Father, we adore your holy name. Um, if we are 10,000 tongues, it is still not enough. Enough. Father, we know that, but we have come to say thank you. We have come to your throne of grace. We have come to your feet with a heart of gratitude. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, for in Jesus' name we have given thanks. Hallelujah, for in Jesus' name we have given thanks. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Firstly, I celebrate all our online viewers and listeners. Thank you for staying with us from the day we started our spiritual awakening. And I believe that we've all had plenty of testimonies. And I pray that our testimonies will not end in the name of Jesus. I welcome you all in the name of the Lord again this morning to our spiritual awakening whereby we'll be treating our open heavens written by our father in the lord pastor ea hadeboye today is saturday march 16th 2024 we'll be treating our open heaven and the topic is live selflessly <clears throat> hallelujah live selflessly 
I'll memorize this taking from the book of Revelations 4 verse 11. Revelations 4 verse 11, which says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and we are created. Hallelujah. When you go through this Bible passage, this memorized for today, and I'll just try, I'll just want to plead with us that even after we are through with the open heaven, can you go back to the memorize of today, Revelations 4 11? There's an in depth knowledge in it. We might not be able to go through it, we might not be able to treat it today. But personally, can you digest this Bible passage? Think about it, meditate about it, and you see the Lord interpreting them in his own way to you. And I pray the Lord visit you in the name of Jesus. So when we go through the book of Revelation 4 verse 11, it talks about how the 24 elders um, were praising God. How the living creatures give glory, honor, adoration, thanks to the one on the throne. And who is that? It is God. You know, the elders fall down before him. They worship him. They acknowledge his majesty. They cast down their crowns before the throne of grace. And they utter the words, Thou art worthy, O Lord. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Can we check the book of Colossians 1, 15 to 16? Just to buttress my point. Colossians 1, 15 to 16. It says, the sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. I will want you to take note of the word through him and for him through him and for him you know this bible passage i love it so much because it talks about the supremacy of the son of god it talks about the supremacy of jesus it talks about the supremacy of god himself it talks about the supremacy of the trinity hallelujah so we treat in today's open heaven topic to be live selflessly it's not a coincidence you know, God is speaking to somebody this morning. God is speaking to somebody's heart this morning. God is redirecting somebody's steps this morning. And I decree in the name of Jesus that as we delve deep into the word of God today, the thing the Lord wants you to see, the thing he wants you to hear, may you see and hear them in the name of Jesus. After you've heard the word, you will be doer of it. You will practice it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, our uh, Bible reading is from the book of Genesis, hallelujah, the book of Genesis, Genesis 15, 50, from verses 15 to 21, hallelujah. If you are with me, you, are, you can open your Bible. If you are with me, you can open your Bible to the book of Genesis 50, 15 to 21. Genesis 50, 15 to 21. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph owed a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now, please forgive the sins of the servant of the God of your father when their message came to him. Then Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. 
and he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Hallelujah. You know, this Bible passage reminds us of the story of Joseph. I know we know the story of Joseph, how he was sold by his brothers, then taken to the palace, worked for his master, what happened between him and his master's wife, and how he ended up in the prison, and how God made him to be the prime minister of that nation you know after the thoughts of joseph brother they were thinking ah we've done so many evil now that father is gone joseph is going to punish us joseph is going to deal with us he will imprison us but no joseph never had that thought he never had those hearts and um, that heart why because he was selfless and why because he had the heart of christ hallelujah many of us can we be like joseph when people treat us badly Maybe why growing up, you never had the chance to be with your parents. You stayed with an aunt and the aunt eventually was not kind to you. But growing up, you are now the president of the states. Are you remembering the, aunt, the, the aunts in, in a good way? Are, are, you, are you taking care of her? You know, many of us, we just hold on to this God. No, aunt was bad to me. She beat me. She, 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 she punished me. She never gave me food. Many of us, are, our hearts are like that. But Joseph never thought that way. I'm very sure his brothers were actually surprised. But he never thought that way. Why? He had the heart of Christ. So let's go into what our Father in the Lord asked for us today. Our Father in the Lord says that the 24 elders in heaven made it clear in today's memory verse that we were created to fulfill God's pleasure. When we live for ourselves alone, we negate the purpose of existence. When the person lives for God, he or she would not abuse any privilege or opportunity. Hallelujah. Praise God. I would like to say that our Father in the Lord here is trying to say that you are not for yourself. Your existence is not for you to feel on top of the world. Your existence is not for you to feel, I can do it alone. Your existence first is for God. God himself. You know, I, I wrote down something on my notepad. I said, when you remember that you are made by God and for him alone, when you rise in the morning, the first thing that comes to your mind is, I am waking up today by God and for God. I am charging up today by God and for God. I am stepping into today, my activity, the things I'll be doing, my thoughts by God in the name of the Lord and for God alone. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our Father in the Lord went ahead and said, Joseph is a good example of someone who lived for God and his fellow human beings, particularly his brothers. Even though they eventually repaid him with evil, his selfless service made him go the extra mile to find them and deliver their food to them. When he couldn't locate them initially, he could have returned home with the supplies he took with him, but he didn't. You can find the story in Genesis 37, 13 to 28. Joseph's love for God caused him to reject the sexual advances of his master's wife. He could not bear doing anything that would displease God. And this made him say in Genesis 39 verse 9, There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Hallelujah. Let me first talk about the Bible passage our Father and the Lord mentioned here. Genesis 37, 13 to 28. When you go through the book of Genesis 37, 13 to 28, you'll find out that um, Joseph was sent to deliver things to his brothers. Then when he got to the field, he was searching for his brothers until he met a man. The man asked him, ah, what are you looking for here? Then he told the man, I'm looking for my brothers. Then the, the man said, you can find your brother, brothers at this social person's house. He got there, he delivered. Um, when, he, when he was coming, his brothers cited, his brothers cited him and they wished and did evil to him. Hallelujah. I would just want to say that, you know, many, many of us, when you keep trying, oh, I'm almost there just to deliver something or to help out. In the, in the middle of the way, you, you just get tired. You feel, oh, I'm not God. Do I, do I need to go to this extent? It's not needed. When the person needs it, they will come back home for it. Joseph may have actually thought like that, that my brothers will come back home and have what they need to have. I'm tired. This son is too hot. Must I go through the pain? 
why go going i know that the, the road he might have actually met different things on the road but joseph kept on pressing why he was selfless he knew that his existence was not just for himself alone it was for god first god first you know this describes our, our day-to-day -day life when you feel i've been trying to help a particular person and it seems the help is not enough or the person is not even yielding we get to just move back but is god telling you to set back why not press on why not keep doing why not keep pushing because of what the heart of god dwells in you hallelujah you um praise the lord and in the book of genesis 39 verse 9 when he was saying that thou art there is no one greater in this house than i am you know he was talking to his master's wife when she was pleading with him to have intercourse with her but joseph said no the first thing he said he said how then can i do this great wickedness and sin against god not even against his master not even against himself not even against the society god first god first you know joseph will have will have thought of he's supposed to, ah she be just once let me go ahead with it my master is not around uh -uh, god is in heaven you can't see me let me take the chance you know sometimes in life many of us are taking chances that cost us our destiny many of us are taking chances that limit us that has given us limitations both in the physical and in the spiritual realm hallelujah praise god you know if let me relate this with our leaders if many of our leaders are at the thought of joseph you know the nation will be in a better place the nation will be in a better place before you embezzle before you do corruption the first thought is god trust me our, our nations will not be in this state we have better leaders better resources better facilities and a lot to ourselves hallelujah so i just pray that for everyone listening to me and i i i, I join my faith with yours to pray for every leader of the nations that in the name of jesus the heart of god we live and we dwell in them in the name of jesus you know if we have the heart of christ if we are selfless we'll be in a better place there won't be anything like stealing killing destroying we will not experience those things but what we will experience is love sound mind peace sacrifice it will be our day-to-day -day language hallelujah so i want you to just think within you are you like joseph or you are out of the box of who joseph is so today god is calling us back he's telling us to retrace our steps back that is why he's bringing the, 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 the story of Joseph to us. He wants us to have a deep thought about who we are. A deep thought about the things we do. A deep thought before reacting, before taking actions. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Our father in the Lord went further. He said, furthermore, his love for people made him interpret the dreams of his fellow inmates. Which led to him becoming the prime minister of Egypt. When he eventually came into power. He did not consider the hardships he endured due to the cruelty of his brothers when they sold him into slavery. The love of God in him made him realize that his sufferings served a higher purpose of God and humanity. He said in Genesis 50 verse 20, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as this day to save much people alive. Hallelujah. You know, in paragraph three, what our father wrote, our father in the Lord wrote, he said, if Joseph had had the thought about his master's wife, about what his master's wife did to him, you know, eventually she lied against Joseph and Joseph was imprisoned. If Joseph had thought about the doings, about the wrongdoing, the evil heart of his master's wife, he ought to decide not to help anybody interpret any dream. And he'd be like, let me be on my own. It is the act of saying the truth. It is the act of being truthful that led me here. That is why I'm in the prison. Do you know that 
If Joseph had decided to be like that, he would have stopped his own destiny. He would have interrupted the plans of God for him. Hallelujah. So many of us, we are the block end. We are in a stranded environment. We are stranded in a particular country. Why? We have refused to be selfless. You are still holding on to the past. You are still holding on to those evil acts people have done to you. You are still holding on to those things that you feel, it's not supposed to be me. I am more than this. Are you God? Are you God? If Joseph had held on to those things, trust me, he would have fulfilled destiny. Nobody will know Joseph. And even though you know Joseph, you only think of his story as, ah, I don't want to be like brother Joseph. May I not be like brother Joseph? The way some of us used to pray, hey, may I not be like Judas Iscariot? But some of us are walking in those steps. We are still holding on to those pasts. Forgive yourself. What are those mistakes that you have made? And you are feeling like, I've made the mistake of helping somebody to, uh, before. God, do I need to be selfless again? You need to. Christ was selfless. Hallelujah. Praise God. If our Lord Jesus Christ had the thinking, he has thought about the lies, the torment, the, the, the cruelty of humanity towards him, then we will not have anything like grace now. Then Christ wouldn't have died for the world. If Christ has thought about how Peter denied him three times, how he was spat on, how he was beaten, how he was chosen, instead of them picking a thief to die, they chose our Lord Jesus Christ. If Jesus had those thoughts, they would never have anything called grace, the five letter word that we write on now. Hallelujah. God is calling you into selflessness this morning. God is calling your act into selflessness. God is calling your heart into selflessness. God is calling your thoughts into selflessness. Hallelujah. God is helping us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our Father in the Lord went ahead, he said, our Father in heaven wants us to live a selfless life so that we can attain the fullness of his purpose for our lives. Those who are selfish should change themselves without knowing it. You know, I mentioned earlier that some of us, we are at the block end, we are in the stranded environment, we, we, we feel we are stagnant. No, we experience stagnancy because of these things. Many of us, we do not... No, and we are not even sensitive that some things we go through are one of the plans of God. You know, before you can be placed into a battlefield to face the enemy, you have to be trained. After being trained, you'll be equipped. How do you just go to the battlefield? You don't have equipment. You are not well trained. What will you do? How will you fight? How do you know I'm supposed to bend here? I'm supposed to raise my sword. I am supposed to make this attack. How will you know? These are the trainings we go through. And many of us have obstructed the trainings of God. Because we feel, I don't have to, I don't have to go through this. This is not God's plan for me. Some hardships we are going through are some of the plans God has for you. Some people treating you bad. Yes, it, it feels bad. But there are, are things that will help you to fulfill purpose. Just like Joseph. Joseph will have thought of it. That I'm not going to help that king. He told me to stay inside prison. How many years? So now I should interpret his dream. No, I'm not going to do it. He will have lost. God will never lose. God never loses. You will lose. So it is time to... Call yourself back, call your act, call your heart, call your thoughts, your mind back into the things of God. Joseph's selflessness led him to be the prime minister of the nation. He changed there. There are many other, there are many people there who, who they will have picked that you are the next in line, you are the next prime minister of this state. And you know, but God just picked Joseph out. Why? He was sensitive. He was able to discern the ways and the things of God. Many of us are unable to discern. We are unable to be sensitive to the things of God, to the trainings God is taking us through. I'm also talking to myself. No one is perfect. We are all working towards perfection. 
We are the saints of God walking towards perfection. And the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So enough of giving yourself block ends. Enough of, of, of experiencing stagnancy. Push. Move forward. How? By being selfless. By carrying the heart of Christ. By carrying the act of Christ. You know that when they were about to... When, when they were about to arrest our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, they could not differentiate between Jesus and his disciples. Why? All of them already had one mind. They admire the same thing. They have the same sound mind. The same voice. The same thoughts. They already looked alike. You could not differentiate. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, many of us, God wants us to be this way. To be sound mind with him. To be alike with him. When people see you, your selfless acts, they see nothing but Jesus. It's another way of preaching the gospel, being selfless. These are the things that we Christians, we soldiers of these thick days need to arise into. We need to wake up into these things. Into these realities. And I pray that the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So I'll be taking the last paragraph. I find that the Lord says that Moses, even though he lived in affluence in Pharaoh's palace, decided to suffer with his brethren, the Israelites, and eventually saved them from bondage by leading them out of Egypt. The book of Hebrews 11, 24 to 27, I will rush up. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with his people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Ha. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Most of us, we are looking unto the treasures, material things, the money, the pleasures, the, 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 the fame. In those things, we neglected looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You know, the Bible here is talking about how Moses forsook all those things. He left the treasures in Egypt. Do you know how many people will come to him daily? Your Highness. My Lord, what should I bring to you? What should we serve you? What will you love to eat? He left those things behind. Many of us are still killing ourselves because of the yes, I yes, ma. Where will he take you to? Eh? Where will he take you to? What profit will he make, will he make to you when you lose heaven? And you enjoy the riches of earth? God is calling you. God is calling me into selflessness. Hallelujah. You know, Father in the Lord went for it. He said, His selflessness ensured that he fulfilled God's purpose for his life and the nation of Israel at large. <coughs> Beloved, begin to live beyond yourself. And you will have the fullness of God's grace to divinely prosper, both spiritually and physically. Hallelujah. Our Father and the Lord has said it all. He has touched it. God is calling you to selflessness. When you are selfless, you see God's purpose being fulfilled in your life. You see yourself carrying out the duties, the desires of God. It will come natural. You don't need to struggle. Riches, wealth. God is the one that gave that wealth that had that no sorrow. Are you bothered about those things? Walk into the, in, in the love, in the selflessness of Christ first. And see how Christ will reward you. Just like our Father in the Lord has said here. Brethren, today, are you like Joseph? Are you Christ-like? Are you Christ-like by heart alone and not by heart? But God is calling you to selflessness by act and by heart. Hallelujah. It is not too late to retrace the steps. It is not too late to do the things and the will of God. And I pray that heaven will help us in the name of Jesus. Can we take the prayer points for today, for this morning and say, Father, oh, I can hear you, Father, from today, 
please help me to live selflessly in Jesus' name. Oh, Holy Ghost, help me, help your little one, Jesus, to live selflessly. Oh, Jesus, help every heart listening to me. Oh, help them, Jesus, to live selflessly. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for joining us this morning. And I, I, I see the Lord helping us, training us and equipping us. You know, don't be, don't be too hard to receive the trainings of Christ. And you see yourself fulfilling God's purpose. Thank you. God bless you. We celebrate all our viewers and listeners one more time. We pray that the blessings of the Lord remain with you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Enjoy the rest of your day.